Welcome to One on One. I'm Greg Bass, your host from the Salisbury Independent Newspaper. It's a big day here at PAC 14. It's election season, and we are interviewing candidates for some of the county positions. Today for County Council District 4, we have Josh Hastings. Welcome, Josh. Thank you. Now, you're a Democrat, and you're running for County Council. District 4, um, just so people know where it is, it's the classic Salisbury District. It's uh, yes. around the university and in town. It includes the hospital and about, about a two-mile radius of the university. Uh, it goes towards Fruitland, but I'm into it. Uh, so why do you want to be on the County Council? I've wanted to be on the Council for a long time. I've been, I have a good history of public service. Uh, to be brief, I'm, I currently chair the Rural Maryland Council. It's a, it's a big honor to do that. I'm in my second year doing so. I've been uh, working in, uh, in land use policy for the last eight years. I worked at the General Assembly. I generally feel like I know how things work and how things run well enough. Uh, that being said, I'm, I'm from uh, from the county. I grew up on a farm in Mardella and uh, and I've got my master's degree in public policy. I have uh, two bachelor's degrees so in general I feel like I'm very qualified and, and I feel like a big I feel a big desire for public service. I know that I can help bring in the right resources from out of our region for our region and uh, that, that, I, that I look forward to doing so. Uh, one guy you worked with uh, in land management was our mayor Jake Day and yes. land use is one of his specialties and I see him using those talents and how he's able to make decisions about changing the city. Yeah, I'm very, first of all, very proud of Jake. He's, uh, I encouraged him to run. I was his campaign manager and, uh, years ago, and he's, uh, he's done a hell of a good job uh, here for the city. And you see that in the folk festival, or, you know, but everything from that to actual downtown uh, redevelopment. All those years we had, I remember Urban Salisbury and other kind of organizations that were designed to try to get the downtown moving again and Jake's helped put together a master plan you know and and, uh, and then start implementing it piece by piece and, and now we're starting to see it really happening and I couldn't be more excited about that. So many of the other districts um, they're they don't even touch the city in terms of the council members being a part of the, the city you're pretty much all city I guess you're all city um, what goes on between the city and the county? You see them not getting along historically for decades. Right. Uh, where there's some kind of tensions between the city and the county, so much so that for many years people wanted to consolidate everything. Right. Um, is, is there a tension? Does there need to be a tension? Can you explain it? There does, <laughs> there does not need to be a tension, but there yeah. definitely is. There has been a tension. And uh, first of all, I don't like the fact that that's then it's, uh, it's portrayed. We're known outside of our region, outside of our county, as not getting along well. And that's not good for state investment into our region. Um, and uh, but uh, there there are reasons for significant conflict. I mean, just walking down my street, I, I live off Monticello and Camden Avenue. You know, there, you'll walk down the sidewalk, and then suddenly the sidewalk will stop. You'll go across one property, and then the sidewalk will start again. That's the difference, is because that's a you know that's a, the the county property there right. in the middle of the city. And our I've long said our our map our city map kind of looks like a like Swiss cheese, you know, there's, there's holes all through right. of county properties. And, and then on top of that, we've had a, a lot of challenges over the last year with the fire services agreement and essentially city, city residents paying for things that the, you know, the, the county uh, residents are actually receiving. So we need to continue to uh, find better solutions there and, uh, and then decrease that conflict. Because the better we're working together, uh, the more we're going to get things like the Folk Festival, other major events to our region. So. How would you use your skills to, to help persuade the other members of the council that they need to have more respect for Salisbury? Well, I, I, think, they're, I think everyone's, first of all, starting to come around to that. I think you can see the leadership. For a long time, the city just, uh, you know, wasn't that only a couple of years ago. Didn't help itself. Like, oh, it was <laughs> historically bad. <laughs> um, but, but now we do have good energy and good leadership and, and good vision, and we're actually getting other, I think, uh, even members of the county, a lot of the county leadership are starting to realize that the more that they can go along with what's happened in the city, the, the better it is uh, for our area. And we, we saw that more recently with the downtown redevelopment. You know, the, um, Governor Hogan helped get a million dollars towards our downtown, and that, that's a big deal. But that's all because of, you know, uh, Mayor Day and then trying to, you know, bring the, the council and, and the county executive's office along to go forward with it. And together, along with, our, with uh, Senator Mathias, uh, you know, they brought uh, it's a million dollars. That's pretty good. It's a good start for our downtown. Right. So I think other people will be jumping onto that. Uh, I'm going to be a part of that. <laughs> That's what, yeah. 
Economic development um, was an issue, certainly, for the, the county executive in the last race. We're not hearing about economic development so much again. It's election time. We're hearing about it again. Um, where are you on this economic development? Do we need to do more to develop the county? Is that a solution? Well, uh, I'll say, first of all, I, I just got back last week from Utah. I, uh, as I mentioned, I chair the Rural Maryland Council. Uh, Maryland is the organization that is chairing all other uh, SRDCs, the State Rural Development Commissions, across the nation. Um, and so it was really nice for me to be able to be in a very, another part, another rural area of the country and then uh, see how they are interacting and what they're doing to, to build things up. Um, I do think that we, we definitely need to continue to, to keep the pressure on. We, we have things like the, you know, the, all the opportunity that could happen within the airport. Um, that, that is something that we're going to have to continue to actually work on and my uh, our predecessor, uh, hopefully if I'm... Yeah, and chairman of the airport commission. You know, yes. Very pro airport. Yeah, and John Hall, I say that, the current, uh, the current county councilman for our district is a wonderful human being who I have uh, just wonderful respect for, he and his wife, Carolyn. And uh, if I'm able to be on the, uh, the council, I'm going to continue to make sure that the airport master plan, uh, Don Veach is doing a fantastic job learning that, uh, leading that. Uh, so I'm going to continue to learn everything that I can and then also build upon that. Um, I think that combined with the great energy that the Greater Salisbury Committee has in the Chamber of Commerce, um, there's no doubt that we can get more businesses into our region, um, and then especially if we continue to build upon education, which is uh, the main uh, thing that a lot of the, that's the biggest factor for a lot of the reasons why people decide to come into our area. Right. Uh, the the biggest success indicator for any community is whether they have a, a, a good airport, a good hospital and a research university, um, yeah. and then also a community college system. And we have all those. We have everything yeah. we need to yeah. really be special. Yes, and quality of life on top of that. Right. And the, the zoo, having that. Uh, I mean, there's so many. I have a friend who actually just moved here to our region. Uh, he just moved here. He and his wife moved here about, I guess, five months ago. They have not yet been to our downtown, uh, our city zoo and park. And so it was just this week explaining, that, hey, how great it was. And so they're excited to go see that. But I think we need more of the, uh, the general public to see that. Um, the last term here in the county council uh, last year, um, education has been one of the big focus issues, whether to spend more, what to do about education. Council actually uh, raised the maintenance of effort number for the first time since 2006 or seven. Um, some progress in that area. Where are you an educator? Do we spend enough? Do we need to spend more? What, what do we need to do for our schools in the county? Well, uh, I should also say that I'm, I'm endorsed by the Wicomico County Education Association, okay. which is very I'm the very teachers. Honored. Yeah, yeah, I'm happy to have that. Uh, uh, I will also say that some people don't know the term, and they say maintenance of effort. What does that really mean for our area? Um, this is kind of this is a state determination trying to help. The state is basically trying to make sure that our counties are investing themselves in, in education. Um, I did speak with the current chair of the Appropriations Committee last year, and she was she made it very clear. And, and I've brought this point up to the other council members and she she asked why does uh, why does why doesn't Wicomico invest in itself when it comes to education and why are we only doing the bare minimum why have right. we in the past done that and she thinks she said well you know essentially what we're doing is we're giving state money to you a poorer county why should we do that if you don't even want to help fund yourself and that's a real issue because if suddenly the state next year um, decides not to to do that and thank God that this morning we had, you know, the Board of Revenue Estimates, that, that actually was... Uh, yeah, it was good news. Good news yeah. there. But if that's not, and suddenly we have any kind of a, a economic turn, downturn, we're going to need to make sure that we're continuing to fund ourselves. And um, so I'm going to be a part of that, making sure that we are not just one time giving as much money to education, but um, we need to do much more. My, my treasurer is Dr. Harlan Eagle, a very well-known uh, uh, educator in, in, in the area. And then my twin sister is a teacher, uh, as well as my brother. Um, they, my, my siblings shouldn't be spending their own money for classroom supplies, which is currently happening. And um, so we need to continue to make, make sure that we're building upon that. And Dr. Hanlon's plan is, is a good one. Uh, I think we need to do a whole heck of a lot more. Uh, so I got her back 100%. Yeah, I wonder about that. That, that comes up as an argument sometimes that the legislators on the other side of the bridge don't understand why we don't do more for our own schools. Yeah, it's kind of embarrassing when you it think is. about it. Yeah, and and we, you know, and I think a lot of the residents here just kind of shrug it off or say, okay, well, you know, it's the system that we have in place. This, 
uh, to, to get the funds that we do. The revenue cap is one reason why, uh, uh, one large reason why. And the states on the, the, the folks on the other side of the state, when, when they're sitting around during General Assembly, and I've spent a lot of years in the General Assembly, that, uh, that they don't understand why we do what we do. Right. And they're not so... <laughs> if we had Norm Conway for many years. He, right. he understood. He was the chairman of the first right. committee. He's now no longer our right. official. If it's any constellation, they're angrier at Worcester County. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> Worcester does have a lot more money that it could devote. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Vision's an important issue. And sometimes I'm impressed with the number of people I'm surrounded by who seem to have a vision. Other times I'm disappointed that people I think should have a vision don't have a vision. You're a young guy. What's your vision? I'm sure your vision for the future of the county is different than mine, but what is your vision for the future of the county? Uh, well, I openly say on my campaign materials that, you know, I want a... I want to continue our rural heritage. I want to respect our rural heritage. I came up, you know, I grew up on a farm. And my family had the very first certified organic farm, uh, fruits and vegetables in the entire state. Um, and we also grew chicken for Purdue. I carry that agricultural heritage with me. And um, I think we want to continue to make, stay a place that is uh, rural in nature, that has a close touch to its outdoors and its open space. But we also need to make sure that we're growing and the, the, what's happening at the university or, or all of the festivals that are coming to, to the downtown. Uh, this is the thing that I'm going to continue to build upon, the quality of life. That's going to be my big focus. And I know that I can work with the city leadership and, uh, and other members of the, of the council to try to build upon that. Uh, across, and not just in Salisbury. You know, I'm a Mardella guy. I want to make sure that the Pittsvilles and the Hebrons and the Sharp Towns are continue to be as vibrant as possible. You know, when you look at, you drive down the uh, main street of, us, of of Mardella right now, a lot of rental properties and it feels like the, the, the soul is kind of pulling back a little bit of, of the area that I grew up in. We're going to, as far as I'm concerned, we're going to continue to reinvest in that. Um, but Salisbury is doing a great job starting now, but we're going to do even more in the future. I think the, I think the quality of life certainly is important. Uh, but one of the things you get from environmentally oriented candidates, I, and I get this a lot, is they're opposed to growth and development because they want to keep the quality of life. Is that a negotiable thing, or how do you manage to think about all that? There's huge chunks of our uh, of, of within each of our municipal areas, within our eight municipalities, that are uh, huge chunks of area that are, are just not developed. These are you know these spaces could be vastly more developed. And you look at space in like Salisbury alone. You look at where the old mall was. You know that not only could that be an area for future. Uh, residential growth, but also for greater economic. You know, you're right there next to the hospital or next to the, um, the civic center. Um, without a doubt, we can we we can fill in more a lot more people within our the infill can be much stronger than it currently is, and uh, and then keep our you know keep our our our, um, our Wicomico River and other areas even greater than it is. The port is the second largest in the state. We need to continue to make sure that it's a special port that we've uh, have enough. It's been dredged in the right way, um, and I think anyone anyone can agree with that. Some tensions in the last four years between the county executive and the council. They're all in the same party, so that it's more than just a uh, a party issue. Yeah. Um, where are you on the county executive form of government? Do we need it? Uh, do you want to work with the county executive? Where Where are you on all that? I think we. We may eventually grow into the like into the county executive. Uh, That's a good answer. And, and the way, and the way that other counties are currently using it. My friend Johnny O is a has hopefully become the new county executive for Baltimore. Uh, he's done a very good job you know, the, of of guiding what he thinks should be a part of that. I, I'm also following the same kind of a lead. I, I think where we will be at. I think once you get to the hundred over hundred thousand mark uh, for for residents, I think that starts to make more sense for this form of government. And which of course we just did only a few years ago across that 100,000 uh, thresh threshold. So um, I think we're going to continue to make that a better race or a better, uh, better um, position to make sure that it's balanced and that we can actually be effective in it. Well, you're out there, you're doing doors, you're easy to run into, but how can people get a hold of you if they want to ask you questions or learn more about you? Yeah, they can uh, call me on my cell phone. I've got it on the website, 410-251-5268. Uh, comes right to my side. Anyone can call me there. Uh, email me, Hastings for Roy Comico. Facebook, that's uh, Hastings, uh, facebook.com slash Hastings for Roy um, I'm available 24-7. I, I don't sleep as much as I probably should. However, your forms of communication are helpful, you know, they can do so. Send out smoke signals, I'll see it. Or stop by my house in Monticello Avenue. So <laughs> I look forward to, uh, to reaching out to anyone and everyone. So. 
He's Josh Hastings, running for County Council, District 4, Wicomico County, and we're thrilled that he was here today. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs>